Hi. I got a book here I wanted to tell you about, and I found it really startling, startling me when I found it and started reading it. Actually, I was uh, studying the nuclear issue. So I went into the library's uh, book list and started ordering anything I could find on using radiation. Okay, and this book is Magnetic Appeal. It's MRI and the Myth of Transparency. This is what they used to call the nuclear x-ray. But it was scaring people so much they changed the name of it to MRI. Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It take a picture of every little thin fleshy level of your brain or anywhere else in your body. This is what it does. And apparently there is I have a lot of radiation because I did have one of those too when I had an aneurysm in my brain. So I'll read you the back of it. Magnetic resonance, resonance imaging not so long ago a diagnostic tool of last resort had become pervasive in the landscape of consumer medicine. Images of the forbidding tubes and their promises of revelation surround us in commercials and on billboards. Magnetic appeal offers an in-depth exploration of the science and culture of MRI, examining its development and emergence as an imaging technology its popular appeal and acceptance and its current use in healthcare. Understood as a modern and uncontroversial by healthcare professionals and in public discourse, the importance of MRI or its supposed infallibility has rarely been questioned. In Magnetic Appeal, Kelly A. Joyce shows how MRI technology grew out of serendipitous circumstances and was adopted for reasons having little to do with patient safety or evidence of efficacy. Drawing an interview with physicians and MRI technologists, as well as ethnographic research conducted at imaging sites and radiology conferences, Joyce demonstrates that current beliefs about MRI draws on cultural ideas about site and technology and are reinforced by healthcare policies and insurance reimbursement practices. Moreover, her unsettling analysis of physicians and technologists' work practices lets readers consider that MRI scans do not reveal the truth about the body as is popularly believed. Although clearly a valuable medical technique, MRI technology cannot necessarily deliver the health outcomes ascribed to it. When a doctor orders an MRI, patients rarely think twice. After reading Magnetic Appeal, you will be surprised and unsettled to find out how this seemingly infallible tool achieved its status as cultural icon and paradigmatic technology for healthcare in the 21st century. Meculo Colgate University, author of The Rise of Viagra. Kelly A. Joyce's intriguing and insightful book about the emergence and use of MRI technology is a benchmark work in understanding the impact of visual technologies on medicine and society. Joyce's analysis of how images became authoritative knowledge will challenge notions of seeing as believing. Magnetic appeal is a major contribution to medical sociology as well as science studies. That was by Peter Conrad, Harry Copeland Professor of Social Sciences at Brandeis University. And the last one is Magnetic Appeal gives depth and breadth to our understanding of the practices and political economy of MRI. The book offers a rich ethnography of MRI laboratory and clinical work 
I regard it as a definitive work in the STS study of biomedical imaging technologies by Lisa Cartwright, University of California, San Diego. And uh, there were some interesting details in here that, and I just did a uh, video on healthcare fraud and there's other little things that's kind of squinchy and kind of sneaks around or squirrels around and does other things in healthcare the way they do it and, and this is a good book to read to find out just how to go about looking at things. Reinterpretation of government purchasing restrictions. Through the 1990s, individual states directly enabled the MRI expansion project by relaxing CON and COPN laws that required government approval before MRI machines could be purchased. Initially put into place in the 1970s, CON and COPN policies sought to control spiraling health care costs, which were thought to be related to the oversupply and overuse of medical procedures. Bloom, 1992-186. These laws required both private and public health care institutions to submit applications to the state explaining why they needed a big ticket item, etc. MRI or CT machines or a new building project, e.g. new specialty units or new hospitals. State agencies then evaluated whether the technology or health care facility was required or not. Only after state approval could nonprofit and for profit businesses purchase a costly technology or build a new unit or hospital. This type of legal intervention aims to balance profit making motives with protection of the public good. With this aim, it shares similarities to zoning laws that restrict the location and size of businesses or liquor licenses that limit the number of businesses that can serve alcohol in a particular locale. Which made, <clears throat> made me wonder about uh, how they're fighting about competitive services here because there are some hospitals that charge sky high prices that are so above all the rest of them. But Republicans are supporting them instead of the one that charges less. Moving on, the last of it, he's saying, targeted literature reviews. The knowledge gained by the interviews and the field work was complemented by a review of medical literature. My interest in what counts as scientific evidence and the relation between evidence and imaging use led me to examine MRI related studies published in medical journals during 1999 to 2006. I used the National Library of Medicine's electronic search engine PubMed Medline to investigate research that focused on medical applications of MRI. I also reviewed MRI related articles published in Radiology, the American Journal of Rogate Genealogy and the Journal of Magnetic Resonance Imaging and Neurology. This targeted literature reviews review allowed me to gain a deeper understanding of how biomedical professionals defined evidence and how these definitions are debated and negotiated over time. It also provides insight into what aspects of the technology biomedical professionals focus on and find valuable. For example, biomedical articles primarily concentrated on the promotion and evaluation of new applications, e.g. expanding MRI use to new body parts like the breast or new techniques such as a functional MRI, although critical evaluation of imaging procedures already in use is now an integral component of journal publications. This type of analysis is less common than evaluation of new applications. The use of multiple research methods, content analysis, field work, in-depth interviews, and targeted literature reviews provide the data for the sociological analysis of MRI presented in this book. This methodology tactic shows the uses of medical imaging 
and the meanings ascribed to it can only be understood in relation to institutional, economic, and cultural contexts. Biomedical professionals and research scientists act neither as passive recipients nor as free agents. Instead, they help create MRI in practice even as their views of the technology are shaped by broader factors such as healthcare policies, changes in the organization of work practices, social constructions of the technology in the public sphere, and cultural views about sight and knowledge. Uh, this is a really good book and crammed with info and as thin as it is there's a lot of valuable info in here and you know I was just kind of floored with it after realizing all the x-rays I've had in my life and realized that you gain so much radiation after every x-ray and then I get the big one when I almost died from a brain aneurysm I'm so full of it I think wow maybe that's why I can see those angels that most people see as ETs these days. Who knows how that might affect the rest of my brain. But we never know just how it all turns out. But we'll see. I suggest you stay cool this evening. It's get up to 109 here. Let's not fry too quick. See you later. Have fun reading.